Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting Parkway Volvo, and I'm checking out a 2019 Volvo XC40 in the R Design trim level. Now the R Design is already a loaded up trim level, but this one has additional options as well. So let's go ahead and check it out. This XC40 is sitting on 245, 45 Pirelli Scorpion tires wrapped around 20 inch aluminum wheels. Now these are the optional wheels upgraded. It also has four wheel disc brakes with ventilated disc rotors in the front and solid disc rotors in the back. The name of this color is Crystal White Metallic. And good thing the sun's out today because we get to see a little bit of the metallic here, hopefully on camera. It's almost like a pearl coat, but it doesn't say pearl coat in the name, so we'll skip over that. Okay, so here in the front, it has the horizontal mesh grill in a gloss black with the Volvo emblem there in the center portion with a little camera. There's lots of cameras. There's four cameras actually around the vehicle. There's one right here. It's kind of like a little GoPro camera with a wide angle view. This has the 360 viewing angle, which I'll show you that when we get inside the vehicle. Here at the bottom, it has a gloss black, what the literature is calling a skid plate or a spoiler here in the front. And then above that is the uh, matte blacks portions of the lower grille. So you have the parking sensors across the front. You can see one here. They even extend here on the side as well. So you have parking sensors in the front and the back. Headlight washers are right here. Now these will pop out and wash the headlights occasionally when you wash the windshield uh, using the washers there. Tow hook places behind that cover. Now the fog lights actually have cornering lights integrated inside them. They're LEDs. So when, when you're going uh, kind of relatively slow speeds and you're cornering, meaning that you're turning the steering wheel more than 30 degrees, it will turn on the cornering lights in those fog lights. So the fog lights are in an LED. Looks like a, kind of like a projector housing there. See if we can get a good look at it. And the headlights are in a reflector LED system with a Thor's hammer LED uh, daytime running light, which looks fantastic. And there's also an amber turn signal mixed into that as well. So your low and your high beams, it's in a quad reflector system. So your low beams are on your outside and the high beams are a combination of the inside and outside. Now these are also active bending headlights meaning that they can turn up to 30 degrees to illuminate the path in front of you as you're turning. The headlight lenses are made of a really strong polycarbonate material that's virtually crack proof. And you can see the bezels around the headlights are black, so that helps out with the design of the R design, the style anyway. Okay, so looking at the profile of the vehicle, you can see the bottom portion has that matte black protective plastic around the base of it. And the doors actually go all the way down. And I'll show you why when we open up the door, why they do that. Um, so even this portion right here opens up. It's pretty cool. Now the, the handles are all body colored. Side mirrors are a gloss black and they automatically fold when you have that setting turned on. And the top portion this is a standard feature on the uh, our design is the gloss black roof. And you can see back in here, it even extends down as well. Here in the center of the windshield here at the top is your adaptive cruise control sensors, as well as little camera there for your lane keeping assist and all the safety features this vehicle have has. And it is it has a lot. So I'm gonna show you the window sticker later on so we can look at all that stuff. This is what the key looks like. And man, is this is just a fantastic key. Is surrounded by Napa leather, perforated Napa leather, really high quality feeling. It has the, the Volvo badge there, just really nice. The chrome on the ends are, are most likely aluminum material. 
you have a physical key on the inside you just slide the, the cover off and underneath there is a physical key just in case you need it but generally you can keep this in your pocket use the vehicle 100 percent without taking it out it has a panic button on that side and it has some buttons here lock and unlock and the ability to open up the power lift gate as well let's go ahead and push the panic button and see what happens just beeps the horn now it's got a really strong horn and it flashes lights the beeps the horn when you do that you do have to push the unlock button to turn it off now when you unlock the vehicle the side mirrors fold out so they're auto they're powered side mirrors and they can automatically fold out or fold in you can have that in the settings depending on what you want you can have them fold in when you lock the door so go ahead and lock it now you can see they fold in you also have an app on your phone in which you can remote start the vehicle. You can check the temperature inside of the vehicle. Um, you can allow access to other people to drive the car. There's lots of stuff you can do with the, uh, the app on your phone. Um, so it's not just your key. You also have the ability to have a, a waterproof key, the smaller that you can take with you when you're swimming or when you're doing exercises or whatever. So that way you don't have to have this key with you uh, all the time you can actually use the little the smaller key to use this vehicle now the keys can be programmed to save things such as uh, radio stations seat position uh, drive modes all kinds of different things particular settings to where when a person leaves with this key this particular key and then comes back it's going to reset everything and memorize all the stuff that it, that was set when the person left the vehicle even if somebody with another key drove it and then they changed everything you come back everything is going to go back to where it was when you bring this key so it's 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 basically a driver it just saves everything for you in that in that manner it's just really really convenient to have that option so you you get to have say a husband and wife they both drive the vehicle one person has the seat all the way forward the other person has it all the way back all the different settings that they have it will memorize all that when they re-enter the vehicle with their particular key as long as they don't swap keys then they'll be okay another feature is that you can push and hold the unlock button for more than a few seconds and it will unroll all the windows down as long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, it can be in a bag. As long as, as long as it's within a close proximity of the outside of the door, you can walk up to lock it. You just place your finger here on the little sensor indicated with, with this little, indica little indentation right there. It locks the vehicle. If you want to unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle. It senses your hand position. It senses the key, of course, and it allows you access to the vehicle. Now another thing I want to point out is the physical key on the inside. You can see you don't see any visible uh, keyhole, but if you pull this back, you'll see the little place is right in here where you put the physical key in. Another thing about these handles, they have approach lights, very bright LED approach lights on the underside of every single handle. And all the handles have the sensors on it so you can use the key on any door not just the front on both side mirrors there is another camera looks like a little gopro right there wide angle view okay so looking here at the passenger side door now it's pollen season this vehicle has been on test drives in the rain and all kinds of stuff and you can see that the side of the door is dirty so when i open it up the reason why the door extends all the way down to the base the very bottom there is because when I open it up now we have a clean surface there's actually a little seal right here so all this is clean so when you get in the vehicle if your pants or you touch this area right here your clothing um, let's say you have a long trench coat or anything it doesn't rub up and dirty your clothes getting in the vehicle so all the dirt stays on the outside of the door the inside stays clean I think that's a fantastic idea these integrated roof rails are come standard on all the XC40s. Now these crossbars, are, they're an add. They're added on the options. They're removable, they're lockable, but this is an optional thing. You don't have to have those. Okay, so taking a look on the inside of the passenger side door, and you'll notice that it has a 
red, almost orange leaning type interior color in the carpeting area. So, and it actually feels exactly like a tennis ball. So it has that kind of felt feel to it. Uh, the same thickness and everything. Now this portion around your arm, now this is kind of like a, um, like a vinyl type material. All this is a soft touch and it continues all the way around here. This is a hard touch surface. And then you have this little design in here. Premium Harman Kardon sound system. Now you'll notice it has a speaker here, but there's no other speaker in the door. And I'll explain that in just a minute. The reason why they, they move the speakers is look how much room you have in these doors as far as a storage area. Just absolutely massive. You also have a little space up here as well. And that material is just super soft and really catches your eye. So you have the R Design sill plate. And I like the way it's separated. Uh, from this silt plate. So this right here in the threshold is a very durable plastic uh, This one's kind of recessed a little bit. So this one one will not get scratched up as easy uh, This one takes all the brunt of the the movement in and out of the vehicle. So to so to speak you have a uh, Amplifier underneath the seat up here For your sound system. So you have a power seat here for the passenger You have the ability to go up and down forward and back tilt and you also have a four-way lumbar adjustment here as well. So you have a leather combination of uh, perforated leather, smooth leather. You have the contrast stitching and a French design over here. Now, you also have the new buck suede here in the center portion. Really comfortable seats, as you would expect from a Volvo. Now, it does have adjustable headrests, so they can go up and down depending on your needs. That's typically not something seen in a Volvo, but you also have a thigh extension here. So just reach in and move it out. It's real easy to move. Uh, it's just like a manual there, little manual button there to move. Here's the floorboard. Now this one has the rubber floor mats or the carpet floor mats that matches uh, this color, but I put the rubber floor mats in just so you can see a, a little bit of a difference. And they snap in place, but check out the leg room. There's a slight, a, bit, a slight bit of tapering right in here, but man, I was, the height of the seat, that's another thing. You can, uh, you know, lift the seat up and it feels like a chair. You have very good visibility. All four seats in this vehicle, all the seats in the back and the front, have this really high stance and visibility and plenty of room. And since the door is dished out, it just gives you a, uh, uh, a, a non-cramped feeling. You feel like you're, you're comfortable and have plenty of room. So this dash is a non-reflective, soft to the touch material. You have more of that design there on the dash in that concave portion. Extends across. And I love these, these vents. I mean, they just look fantastic. Easy to use. And we'll check out the other ones in there. That one's kind of covered up. But you also have a locking glove compartment. And it's very interesting because, let's go ahead and check it out, I'll show you. So for one thing, we have this flip out hook. So we can hang stuff on this hook. Now, it's a breakaway, so if you were to hang something too heavy, I think it's about four or five pounds, um, you hang it, it pops out of its position, but you can always hook it back in. So it's not gonna break as easy. So when you close the glove compartment, you have this handy hook right there. You can hang a bag or whatever. That's one thing. You have a place to put a tire gauge, pin, or whatever right in here. Let me take these papers out because in the base of this is a rubber portion. So it's a textured rubber portion in the bottom. Really feels high quality, keeps your stuff from sliding around. Place up here to put your manual at the very top. You also have a key. So this is the physical key right here to lock the glove compartment. So it's a different key than the physical key in the key itself, the key fob that I showed you. So you can take that key, lock whatever you want in the glove compartment, and take that little key with you just in case you have 
um, you know, valet driver or somebody driving the vehicle, they don't actually have access to the glove compartment. It stays locked. You have the key for that. They had the key to drive the vehicle and then you're good to go. It also has a little space there on the side to quickly access something that you can put right in there, a little card or registration or whatever. It's one thing about Volvo seats, it's one of those things where you just have to sit in them to really appreciate them because they are just fantastic. Some of the best seats I've ever sat in. Okay, so here's the inside of the back door. Very similar in style and functionality. Uh, it has the soft touch surface around just like the front. Then you have hard touch surface, a little bit different style design right in there. And all the doors have these really like um, high quality feeling aluminum, polished aluminum handles. They feel really, really nice and high quality. Then you have a speaker here. Then you have that felt and a large pocket at the bottom. Now you notice you do have a speaker in the door back here, uh, unlike the front. There's your threshold, has a little place to put some stuff. Um, <laughs> really handy because not only you can put stuff in there before you get in also when you get out you're probably going to notice that your stuff is in there and not walk away so easy you know without just gives you a nice place to put little objects your keys or just something small and you know maybe even possibly if your change falls out of your pocket it might fall in there so you can get it okay so even with the seats all the way back this vehicle has fantastic room back here so you have the net pockets on the back of the seats. Now the back of the seats are a strong um, hard touch surface here, durable plastic. You have the two vents back here that match the front. Look at that, looking fantastic. Under here is a USB-C charge port so you can charge your cell phone or device back here. Armrest with cup holders. You even have a pass-through back there. Cup holders have these little flexible things to take up the space but look at it, it's wide open so that way you can put anything in there you can prop your cell phone up in there or whatever you can move that out of the way and utilize the center portion if you'd like and the flat it's a three-piece floor mat with the rubber system so you have this piece to separate it hooks underneath these mats and there's the mats that go on the ends little bit of a hump there on the center but not a big deal considering it's an all-wheel drive vehicle you have the latch system or ISO fix for car seats and they're under this little cover so they're easy to find the latches there now these seats fold down add into your cargo space also your headrests now these are not adjustable these flip down now the, the driver can use the touch screen up there to flip those down to add to the visibility back here. Uh, of course, you don't want to do that when there's, custom, there's passengers back here. The center headrest is adjustable, so you can move that up and down. The fuel door is here on the passenger side, and it's very simple, capless design. You don't have to worry about a cap, losing the cap, cap getting in your way, dirtying your hands, anything like that. It does require premium fuel, as indicated here inside the door. When the vehicle's locked, it also locks the fuel door as well. It has the R design name here on the side. And looking at the back of the vehicle, starting here at the top, it has a little shark fin antenna and a gloss black matching the, pretty much the entire top of the vehicle. And then you have this rear spoiler, making it look all neat. LED powered third brake light, and you have your rear windshield wiper. The rear lights are powered in combination of LED and standard bulbs for these rear tail, these tail lights. And they kind of contoured with the 
shape of the vehicle, which is pretty neat. Very distinct looking at nighttime. Down here, you have a reflector, but you also have a fog light, a reverse fog light. So you could turn on that independently from the front fog lights, and they are a bright red light. The backup camera is located just under here, kind of hidden right under there, which you probably will need to clean every once in a while, considering its position, um, but it's fairly easy to get to when you lift up the tailgate or the lift gate. Then you have a gloss portion back here, and uh, in the literature they're calling that a skid plate, even though it's not very low to the ground. And then you have dual exhaust tips here. Now they're basically exhaust surrounds, but exhaust does actually exit these surrounds. To open up the power lift gate, you can of course use the key. You can use the little button uh, that's under next to the backup camera right here in the center position. Uh, senses the key as well. So if the vehicle's locked, you can push that button. It will sense the key and allow you to enter the vehicle. You can also just walk up and kick your foot under here, like so, and it will lift up for you. So you can see, here's the button to open it up. And there is the backup camera, which you can clean. It's easy to get to now if you're tall, I guess. You can reach up and kind of wipe it. And then you have some buttons here, which I'll show you what those are in a minute. As an LED light illuminating this entire ground. Hopefully I'll be able to do a night video on this. There's a place under here to store your reflective triangles or just whatever you want. Okay, so this one has the shade in place, which is removable. It's very light and easy to move. It has these little strings here that you can just unhook and take this completely out if you want to. But it's really good to keep things out of the sun, out of view, and just, you know, just looking ni nice and tidy. Okay, so if you have the seats up, this is your cargo spe space, and really nice. I mean, as far as the size back here, it's a nice flat floor. It goes all the way up to the seats, and you have a 12-volt power supply, lights on both sides as well as the lift gate. You have a bag holder on this side. Ability to lower the seats right there. Use pushing a button. I'll show you that in a second. Has this elastic so you can put stuff in there all the way across and secure it. And then you have a place to put some stuff there. Tie downs. You can see they're white here, here. Very big steel tie downs. There and there. Bag holder. This is what the, uh, the floor mats look like, the, the standard ones kind of like a Berber type carpet material. It's not the same felt as you, I showed you on the door. It's different, just same color. Then this one has the cargo mat in place, which protects the vehicle. It's like a rubber material, same as the, the material as the floor mats. Under the cargo mat, you see this handle. It's a really high quality rubber handle right here. So I lift this up and I can push this back like so and rest it. So now I have like a little shelf up there that I can secure stuff. I can also utilize this space under it and then put it back so I can lay something flat here, put this down and then add more stuff if I want. Another thing I can do with this is I can turn it this way, put it right in that groove. Now I have a divider so I can put stuff behind it. I can put stuff here. I can utilize the additional height here in the back. Also, I have these little bag holders now so I can hang these and it's pretty secure too as well so it's kind of like a little triangle shape once you put it in there so you can hang bags you can utilize this space and also you can put stuff in the back this will be perfect for going and getting groceries you could put the like, small items and stuff like that back there and then hook your bags you could put larger items here just really really good design in my opinion let's go ahead and flip it back under this bottom portion this additional portion is your spare tire and tools and you have some wires there on the side utilize some of the space for cargo i guess there's your front tag holder if you'd like to use that now it has this little bag for let's say you have a punctured tire and you need to change your tire it has a bag that you can put the dirty tire in and put it in the vehicle so that way you don't get your vehicle dirty so that's really nice that they include that 
Okay, so it's a 60-40 split seat. So you can see the split right there. So we can fold down one or the other or both to add to our cargo space. And we do that uh, by pushing this one of these buttons. Now we can, of course, there's a button on the seat we can push, but if we're back here, it's real easy. Let's say we want to lower this, This uh, we'll do the left side, the smaller side. So here it goes, I push it. Not only does it lower the headrest, but it also folds the seat down in one kind of continuous motion. So I'm gonna push it so you can see, you kind of push it and hold it and you can see how fast that is. But check it out, it's a completely flat surface now. So there's not much variation in height. I mean, it's just really nice. Some vehicles have, the seats don't go completely flat and there's a little bit of a hump there. This is really easy to, let's say you have a big mirror that you wanna carry or something flat, you can just slide it in there and you have plenty, plenty of room. Of course, you can fold both sides. Let's go ahead and fold the other side now. All right. So look at that, look how much added cargo space you have. Now, if you take out the shade, you have even more height as well. So you have this really, really versatile and large cargo space when you need it. When you're all done in the cargo space, to lower the power lift gate, you can of course use the key or you can push one of these two buttons. So you have this first button, which will lower the tailgate. The other one will lower the tailgate, then lock all the doors and secure the vehicle completely. So let's go ahead and push this button Without getting our hands dirty, we just push the button, it goes down, secures the, that, and then it locks and secures the entire vehicle, even folding in the side mirrors. So let's go ahead and start it up. As long as I have the key inside the vehicle, I can have it in a bag, in my pocket, or whatever. As long as it's inside, I just put my foot on the brake and hold it, and push this button. Okay, so here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat hooks in place, um, but it also, it doesn't extend past the pedals. So that way, it, there's no chance of the pedal getting caught underneath the floor mat, uh, especially the accelerator pedal. And check it out, you have the raised rubber grips on the aluminum pedals looking nice and sporty. You also have a footrest on the left side, which is fantastic. Okay, so let's take a look under the hood. It's showing us on the display that the hood is open. To open the hood, the latch is just about as far as you can go here on the right. Some of the other Volvos have it at the end of this, right in here. This one is a little bit further down. Just reach in, push up, and lift the hood up. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You can see I'm just doing it with my hand there. And it goes the rest of the way up by itself so you can see the latch there what it does so there's actually two latches that secures the hood down and that's the safety catch there on the right side there's some insulation underneath the hood all right so it has a seal across the back so seal back in here the strut towers are braced in to each other and the structure of the vehicle. There's your battery, it's insulated. You have the ability to access the positive post here. Your negative post is over here. All right, so one thing about the Volvos that I don't think I've ever mentioned before is the cover is actually a soft foam material. Very soft foam material. Um, so instead of having a hard plastic cover that's gonna echo noise and possibly vibrate and all that stuff, this foam is dampens the noise and um, you know it's just a really neat cover. If you're gonna have a cover on the engine, I think the foam is the best idea. So under that foam cover is a 2.0 liter turbocharged direct injection engine with 248 horsepower at 5,500 RPMs and 258 pound-feet of torque at 1,800 RPMs. Really high torque at low RPMs. That's paired to an eight-speed Geartronic automatic transmission with stop-start feature. So this four-cylinder actually has ball bearings for the camshaft, which is awesome. 
and the uh, the turbo is back here underneath down underneath this area you can't really see it from this angle it has an insulated firewall as well as a, a fire a heat shield there as well around the exhaust in the back now right here it says air wolfer technology so thought that was kind of interesting that it's showing it under the hood but it's actually the woofer for this vehicle is actually under the dash so you can see some of the speakers there speaker grills but uh, this saves the space in the doors um, and the sound from the woofer goes out from basically feels like it's throughout the entire vehicle it's pretty neat we'll, we'll kind of check it out when we get on the inside now the all-wheel drive system in this vehicle has the ability to split 50 50 as far as the amount of power going to each axle uh, but typically while driving in normal conditions on dry pavement most of the power is going to be through the front wheels now when you ex when you're stopped and you're ready to accelerate it's going to have power to all four wheels until you get going so that way you have maximum traction when you take off but once you get going it's going to go back to the front wheels it's a very efficient design um, keeping the wheels going and, and the traction when you need it uh, without having to put the power to the rear wheels all the time it's just kind of there when you need it most the inside of the driver's side door is just like the passenger side except for it has a few more buttons so right in here is your power windows now all four windows are one touch uh, powered up and down automatic so we can go ahead and push it nice and smooth and then smooth going up the side mirrors are adjusted here you just pick a side and adjust them with this little pad you push both of them in together to do the manual power or the power fold um, automatically by pushing that whenever you want like say if you need to squeeze into a tight parking space or whatever um, but typically they'll just fold in when you lock the vehicle and speaking of that there's your door lock controls now you have two memory seat positions now this seems a little redundant to me because you have the key that actually saves all that for you so but if you do want to have additional um, memory seat or if you want to use this feature if that's something you're just used to uh, you can do that as well power seat here for the pass the driver's side as well and it has this basically the same features up down forward back all that good stuff and the four-way lumbar adjustments has the same thigh extender as the passenger size you can pull it out whenever you want but it also since this is the driver's seat it has to have something special so we have this little storage compartment under here secret storage compartment so you can keep your whatever you want in there valuables or whatever now these are heated seats the steering wheel is heated as well three stage heated seats three stage heated steering wheel which we'll look at that in just a minute here to the left of the steering column you have two places for putting a card like say a credit card debit card driver's license that kind of thing dimmer switch for your interior gauges now they also auto dim as well uh, they they change sort of like your cell phone can do where it will change the brightness depending on the outside brightness and then the ability to open up the power lift gate there it also has a tilt and a telescoping steering column with a very robust latch here so you just it's right there in the center you pull it out push it up has a, a place where you can put both your fingers on it and you kind of lift it up and secure it in place you do have to have good control over it otherwise it'll kind of flop down really fast so you want to have control over that thing because once you they want to have a secure steering wheel so it makes a secure connection and secures it uh, really well okay so checking out the inside sitting in the driver's seat now if you're already impressed with this car you're really going to be impressed now because this is where it really adds some value to me so sitting here i'm six feet tall I have the seat all the way back just to show you the foot position the foot rest here on the left side is fantastic um, just plenty of leg room and knee room so looking at the steering wheel is a leather wrap steering wheel three stage heated leather wrap steering wheel so it's not simply on or off 
you can actually have three levels of heat on the steering wheel, which is nice. And then you have the smooth leather here at the bottom, transitions to the sporty looking perforated leather here on the ends, a little bit of a grip, and then it transitions back to the smooth leather at the top. And check out that double stitched white contrast stitching. Fantastic. And then it has the R design uh, badging here with the aluminum portion, kind of like a satin polished aluminum. Really nice. Has the pedal shifters here on the back side with a rubberized back portion. So back here they're rubberized and they flex a little bit. So they're made out of a plastic material. And when I pull on it, it flexes a little bit, as you can see. Um, but it's made to flex because instead of if it was really rigid, that you can actually break, break it possibly. So it allows you to flex a little bit. So when you're shifting through gear, especially if you're really in a in a in the mood to go fast or whatever, and you're pulling on it and you're pulling on it, you know, um, you can actually pull on it as hard as you possibly can. It's not going to break. It's very strong and durable, and um, and everything. But it does flex a little bit when you first touch the ends. You're going to feel like it's it's like, hey, this is kind of kind of weak or something. But it is very tough. Okay, so here on the left side is your cruise control. Not only is it the adaptive cruise control um, to where you can you turn it on. When you turn it on, uh, you can, of course, use the cruise control, but it has the radar system in which it keeps you between a distance between the vehicle in front of you. You can change that distance here, um, closer or further away. I like a far distance. Uh, but anyways, not, in addition to that, you can also, this is where you can put on the pilot assist. So you can have the adaptive cruise control or the pilot assist on. So this is where it actually not only keep you driving, it'll actually um, turn the steering wheel for you and just keep you in your lane. The, the speed matching the vehicle in front of you or the whatever you have your, your cruise control set at. So, but it also senses vehicles in front of you so it actually can come to a complete stop. So even without pushing the brake, uh, you can check out my, my test drive video. I'll leak, leave a link in the description. Uh, I was real hesitant to not, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want, I wanted to push the brake, but I just kind of kept my foot above the brake and actually came to a complete stop. It did a really good job without coming too close to the car in front of us. So it was pretty nice. So the park pilot and the adaptive cruise control controls are here. Here on the right side, volume for your radio change to the audio tracks or the radio stations here on your radio your blue your uh, voice command voice recognition systems here and then you have this button um, for your trip so you have the ability to change through this little menu here your phone navigation and trip uh, options using this pad here on the right so once that once that little menu is up these buttons control that and you make selections with the center portion you push this to make that go away now this is for your radio again. All right, so looking at the, uh, here on the right side, your windshield wiper controls for your front are here. The back is on the end, so you have an intermittent and then on. On the left side is your turn signal, and then you have your headlight controls on it as well. So you have off, parking light, headlight, automatic, and then you can cycle your automatic high beams on or off by pushing it up. It's kind of springs back like so. So it lets you know if it's on right up here, now it's off. And then your front and rear fog lights are controlled here. You just push that or push this one. This is your front, this is your rear. Okay, so the gauges are actually a digital screen. I don't know if you can see that. It's just basically a screen, uh, sort of like your touch screen or your cell phone. And it gives you the ability to have different information or different look to the information. So right now it has a speedometer there on the left with the digital portion in the center portion. It also shows you, it knows where you're at using the GPS system, it can show you the speed limit. It even has a little red line showing you where the speed limit is. There's the speed limit sign, is what people recognize, and then the digital speedometer there, which is really cool. On the right side, and all this changes, I'll show you that in a minute. On the right side is your RPMs. Has that 
kind of like illuminated needle appearance and your fuel gauge is at the very bottom and then what gear you're in so this is handy to, especially if you're using the manual transmission portion and then it has the outside temperature a digital clock and then your safety features there at the top center now you notice there's nothing in the center portion you can actually add something there and I'll show you that when we get to the settings in the touchscreen but that's kind of a a simplistic view right there of the gauges all right let's look through here we already saw the start button so now check I really like these these vents they have the chrome surrounded by the black shiny black just really looks nice you have the speakers there at the very top and remember it has hidden speakers there's actually one in the wheel well in this vehicle too as well so that's like one of the woofers really interesting i'm gonna try to do a um, an audio test as far as um you know with a special microphone and all that stuff to hopefully try to convey the awesomeness of the sound system in here okay so here's your touch screen it only has one button physical button down here at the bottom when you push that it always goes back to this main screen um, it's letting me know now what i can do once i'm in the main screen so one of the things I can do right now, it has these, these main features. We can look at the map. So current position, like so. We can make it bigger, which is really nice. And, and the vertical um, screen is, is much better on the navigation, in my opinion, because you get to see more of the road while you're driving. And it just overall, uh, just a big, easy to visually see. Sort of like your cell phone, uh, is easy to see and read and everything. Everything's uh, big. All right, let's go back out of this. Push this again. This is kind of like a back button or a home button. Um, sometimes it's a home button, sometimes it's a back button, depending on where you're at. All right, and then what your radio is doing, your phone, and then it's showing your weather right now. But we can change that portion depending on, we're, on what we're doing in this screen. So it has three screens, one to the right and one to the left of that main screen. So it's not too complicated now there is a lot of things you can do with it here on the right screen you have your am fm satellite radio favorite radio uh, stations bluetooth usb and ipod you also have the ability to use apple carplay and android auto once you set that up it does have to have a direct connection with your cell phone to set that up and use those features uh, your sound experience messages uh, let's go into the sound experience so this is where you can um, change like say if you want the sound to sound best for the driver everybody or the rear passengers however you want to do it then you can adjust the sound here the surround level you can even turn that feature off but you notice that now now that I've adjusted that setting now it's at the bottom of this main screen this home screen instead of the weather so once we start messing with a feature over here, it puts them in that it puts it in that home screen because that's basically what we've done last. Uh, same thing now the driver performance. So you can see what's going on there with the uh, fuel consumption and different information. Now that's in that center screen. So we can always expand it if we want. We can also go into the preferences uh, right here. Travel link. That's a really good uh, feature. You have the ability to find gas, the nearest gas station. Uh, you can change the fuel type. You can get prices, all that stuff. You can sort it by brands, nearby, all that stuff. So let's go back out of that. Actually, let's close that. Um, you can get the weather. That's what we originally had. Uh, sports, different alerts as far as, you know, freeze warning. I think there's actually a freeze warning now. Yeah, freeze watch. All right, minimize that. Okay, so we can go into a download center and download more apps if we want. Okay, so let's go over here to this side. So this side we can turn off on or off different features. Um, electronic stability control, we can turn that to sport mode so we can actually spin tires a little bit. We have lane keeping aid. This is where keep us in the, lay, the, the lane. We can turn that off if we want. Same thing with park assist, rear cross traffic alert, stop start feature, and your blind spot monitor system. Now, when we change drive modes, the stop start feature will 
uh, turn off when we put it in the performance mode, the dynamic mode, which I'll show you in a minute. Park in and park out. This is where it actually parks the vehicle for you, turns the steering wheel. You just put it in gear and push the accelerator or the brake. And the headrest fold, this will fold the headrest in the back. So I'll show you that right now. See those headrests back there? Let's say they're getting in your way. Just push the button and it folds them down. Now we'll do that if there's passengers back there. So uh, you don't want to, you know, hit anybody in the head and if unless you unless you want to, I guess. I don't know. It's probably not recommended. But this right here is really, really awesome, the camera. So this has like a top-down view. It has it uses all those cameras to stitch together a, a complete surrounding view of uh, the car. Now it's a low down and you can see it's stretched a little bit, but it gives you that real-time view. So if I put it in reverse, once I put it in reverse, it gives us where the tires are going to go. And when I turn the steering wheel, it has those active tire lines showing me where the tires are going to go. So if I back up a little bit, so you can see the surroundings move because I'm moving. Put it in park, the lines go away. Now, if I touch the screen, I can look and see what's in front of me. I go back to the 360 view, push this camera, see what's behind me. I can zoom. Let's say I want to back up to a trailer hitch or something. Or just see what's back there. You can see it's really stretched because it's a really wide angle view. Let's go back to the 360 view. Let's say I want to park next to a curb. On both sides, I can see really right there next to the vehicle. So as I turn the steering wheel, you can see the tire pops out there because this is right there next to the wheel. So I can get really close to the curb without actually hitting the curb and uh, messing up my tire or wheel. Same thing on the right side. So this is a really handy feature. When you're parking a real tight spot, you can see right where you're at. You can park in, you want to have a straight angle inside the parking space. You can be a, like a perfect parker now uh, just by looking at this. And you don't even have to really use the park, um, park pilot. I mean, really you could use it, but this is a really uh, handy way of parking the vehicle or just seeing around the vehicle, seeing if there's anything on the ground. Um, you know, around the vehicle. You know, it's just, just something on the ground, like a bicycle or something. You're going to see it here, no problem. All right, let's get out of that. So the camera, and that actually turns on um, when you put it in reverse. So, you know, automatically pops up. You don't have to find it in this menu system. All right, the roadside information, you can turn that off. Cruise control, you can turn on or off. Private locking, uh, you can turn that on or off. Corner illumination, the, the corner lights, you can turn those off and acting active bending lights, wiper service position. This actually lifts the windshield wipers all the way up so you can get to them easier. And uh, collision avoid assistance. This would actually, if it senses that you're going to hit something, it swerves the steering wheel to avoid it. So you can turn that feature off if you want. Default will be on. All right. Your push this button right here. And this takes down, it has your, um, your, messages there you also have a searchable owner's manual that you can find different features you can learn about your car and everything right here in the service manual let's say there's a particular thing you need to look up you don't remember how to use it or you don't know what it is you can search look for exterior interior features or a quick guide fantastic really like that all right so let's go back here and this is where the settings are so let's go to the car settings. Let's go to displays. Um, we have display themes. So let's go here first. Let's go to display themes. Okay, so right now it says glass, minimalistic performance, and chrome rings. So I'm going to show you what the gauges look like now. So right now it's in the glass mode. Let's go to minimalistic. So that's what that looks like. Isn't that cool? Now performance. So add some red, add some cool looking performance stuff there. You see the even adds that red around the the RPMs and then the chrome rings. So what do you think? I kind of like that performance. We'll leave it there for now. Okay, so we'll, now let's get back out of that. The let's go to display driver display information. So right now it says show nothing, right? So that's what's in the middle is nothing. We put, push the next one is current media. So it's showing what's on the, on the radio. Or we can see the map in there. So it moves the gauges, makes them smaller. 
to allow room for the map. So now the map is right there in front of the gate, right between the gauges, which is perfect. When I was driving it, that's what I had, and it was so much easier to look there at the gauges, and so intuitive because I'm so used to using looking at the gauges instead of the screen that that was like a perfect position to have the map, especially if you're driving um, and you're following a um, you know a, a destination. This is fantastic. All right, let's go back out of that, back out of that, and just to kind of show you all the different. All these are different, basically, um, just as useful settings that you can go into that are now like say if you want to have the side mirrors fold in or uh, the light how long you want the lights to stay on when you lock it that kind of thing okay so that's kind of a quick rundown of that but let's look here at the very bottom you notice that the climate control has always been up you have a clock here at the top and your climate control is always down here so right now let's go to the temperature so we can change the temperature for the driver and here on the passenger. Now you can synchronize them right here. See, it has a, has a broken chain, now it has a connected chain. So now they're synced together. So when I adjust this one, it's gonna adjust the passenger side as well. I can go right here and adjust the heated steering wheel. We'll go ahead and turn that off. It's a three stage, see? Three, high, medium, and low, and then off. Same thing with the seat, high, medium, low, and off and then we can close that so it's real easy to get to same thing with the passenger you can turn the heated seat high medium low for that if I push this it makes the whole screen turn into a climate control screen so you have parking climate so you can precondition the vehicle and add a timer when it was when you want it to do that of course you can use the, your app as well on your cell phone and then when you go to your main climate you can adjust your fan speed you can adjust where you want the air to blow air conditioning, recirculate the air, front and rear defrosters, auto climate, where you just basically set the temperature and, and let it do its thing. You can always close that and it goes away, it goes back here. So you can always hit it and go back to these features, really easy. You notice that at the base, the very bottom, so uh, you're, you're reaching to the screen, it's easier to reach here than say up here, right? So that's really nice. Okay, so down here is the volume for your radio, play and pause, change through your audio tracks, front and rear defrosters, and your four-way flashers. And then you change your drive mode. So when you change your drive mode, it will pop up here. So you have comfort, off-road, dynamic, and eco. So right now, it, originally it was in comfort, right? So look at the gauges. When I put it to off-road, it changes your your speedometer to a 25 mile an hour speedometer. It tells you that you're in off-road mode, right? When I change it to dynamic, it has this. It actually changes to the sporty look, but we already have the sporty look, so um, that's that. It gives you the high performance. Off-road is you know on a rough road. Um, comfort is everyday use. Now let's go to the eco. So let's change it to the Eco. So now it, more the RPM gauge changes to a gauge that lets you know how eco-friendly you're going as far as how much fuel you're using. So right now we're in the, the needles all the way down in the red because we're not moving yet, we're using gas. But as you drive, if you want to keep it in that green zone, then you use, use less energy uh, to propel the vehicle basically. And then the Comfort is the everyday use. So those are your different drive modes which are controlled here. You just push it and then you rest on the one that you wanna, you wanna keep there. Okay, so down here is a two USB ports and a 12 volt power supply. And you have a wireless charging dock. I actually have my cell phone laying there charging the whole time. And then you have space around it with a light back in there. But what I like about this charging dock is that it's really easy to access your phone. So as you can see, it's already charged. So it has the space around it. It's easy to get to. You just drop it in there and it starts charging after just a few seconds once it recognizes that it's on a charger. All right, so 
right in here is a little storage space. Now you could put a key in here is what it seems like it's designed for. It's about that size. A little storage, storage space there. There's cup holders. It's wide open. This one's lower. This one's a little bit higher. Has a ru rubber surface on the bottom. Same thing with this compartment and the wireless charger. Now the charger, wireless charger works even if you have it in a cell phone case. I have a fairly sick, thick cell phone case that I had on it and I tried it. I actually tried two different cases. Both of them work with this. So I just took it out of my case just so you can see because I have a, a case that covers up the screen. So I wanted you to see that it's charging. Okay, so here's the shifter. So this is a little bit like a non-standard shifter. It, it's kind of a bump shifter. So to put it in reverse, um, right now it's in park. We push it forward twice. First time puts it in neutral. Second time puts it in reverse. Okay, and when we put it in reverse, uh, a couple things happen. One is the camera system pops up, but you also have the parking sensors activated as well. We can turn those off if we want to. The rear cross traffic alert is also uh, available, which you can turn on or off. All right, we bump it down, neutral, drive. So we have to go twice, okay? So if you just bump it one time accidentally, it's not gonna go into the gear. It'll go into neutral, but it won't go into gear. Pulling it down again, goes into manual mode. So you can change through the gears manually. You can do that by bumping it to the right to go up, left, down. Now to put it back in drive, you bump it down again. So kind of show you the screen here. So right now we're in drive, I bump it down, manual mode, bump it down again, it kind of swaps those. Pulling it, pushing it up, neutral, push it up, reverse. So you can see what gear you're in, um, and you, t it's real easy once you get used to it. And then when you put it in park, you just push that, push it in park. So the position of the shifter always stays in a, it doesn't slide like a normal shifter. You just bump it, and that kind of indicates which gear you want to go into. You have electronic parking brake in which you can turn on right here. Just pull it up. To release it, you put your foot on the brake, push it down, and it locks the rear wheels. And then you have the um, brake hold feature. So if you're stopped at a stop sign for a long period of time, or a stoplight or traffic or whatever, it will hold the brake for you if this is turned on and the light is on. Then it'll hold the brake for you until you push the accelerator. So after you come to a complete stop, it's going to keep you there, keep you from rolling around keep you from moving forward uh, until you push the accelerator, then it'll release the brake and let, you know, basically holds the brake for you, brake hold. Okay, so this is a really cool feature. I love this, a little trash can. So you can put little pieces of trash in there and it keeps it nice and tidy and closed. Put your straw wrapper in there or whatever and just perfect position. It doesn't look bad. So if you have trash in it, nobody's gonna see it and it's really easy to take out and change. I'll show you that in a second, or empty. Um, so this is your armrest, soft to the touch. I can't really feel the bottom, but it's not like super cushy soft like the seat. It has like kind of like a rubbery soft, I guess you can say. It has the stitching on the ends. I don't know about sharing it with the passenger, it's kind of narrow. Go ahead and lift this up. And here's some storage space microfiber cloth to clean your your screen is in here so it comes with a really nice thick microfiber cloth and on it has a little it says volvo on that side the other side says push and hold the button for two seconds and what that does when you want to clean the screen you push and hold this button and it puts it in cleaning mode so now i can wipe the screen without um without affecting any of the settings. I don't want to wipe that and all of a sudden all my settings are changed or you know whatever. Um, so I push that, it pops back up. So anytime I want to clean the screen, you're going to have to do it frequently with touch screens. That's just the way it is. Comes with a really thick, it's not like a cheap microfiber cloth. This is a really thick quality one. It comes with the vehicle. And then you have a rubberized portion there at the bottom, a little net pocket there in the front. And the net pocket is attached to the little trash can. So let's go ahead and Lift this up so you can see how to change it. So there it is. And a little lid, you take that off by pushing this button. You pop the lid off and you can empty it, clean it, put it back in. And 
and then it's like a press fit. You can see the little pads on the sides. You can actually leave this out if you want to. So let's say we lift it out. We have this little quick access place right there. But who wouldn't want a little well-designed, easy to reach trash can in their vehicle? I mean, I would definitely like that. So that's a really good feature in my opinion. Okay, so the rear view mirror is an auto dim rear view mirror. It has a compass, digital compass. Both side mirrors are also auto dimming. Then you have your garage door opener controls here, the home link garage door opener control system. Right up here, you have the ability to reach roadside assistance for, for, for emergencies. Now, if the vehicle is involved in, a, a, in an accident or something like that, it will automatically call uh, for assistance for you. But you can always do that if you need to. This controls your sunroof, which I'll show you in a second. You have these little reading lights here and here. Uh, you can have them turn on with the door if you'd like. And you can turn on all the interior lights by pushing that button. All right, so the visors, they have a little clip and mirrors and lights. And they're made of like a, feels like a really tough textured vinyl over a, um, like a hard plastic is what it feels like. So it's very durable and easy to clean type material. The top, the, the headliner kind of feels like a, like some kind of like a couch cloth, I guess you could say something like that or a, a canvas type material soft canvas Okay, so there's the control for the sunroof. Let's check it out huge panoramic sunroof now the shade covers about 90% 80 or 90% of the light it doesn't cover a hundred percent of the light um, But it does cover most of it to keep it from getting in the vehicle and like I mentioned before it has a sensor in here that if it gets too hot, it can close the shade for you if you're not in the vehicle. So um, that's in the settings as well, which is really cool. Now another thing is this is this is designed to keep the roof. Now some vehicles have a sunroof that l makes the headliner a little bit lower. This one is not that. It's with with this or without the panoramic sunroof, the head the headroom is the same, which is really interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and push this button. We're going to move back the shade. Nice and smooth. But look at that. Look how much glass is here. So this back portion is fixed. The front portion actually opens up. So let's go ahead and tilt it so we can allow a little bit of air in. Move it down. Now let's move it back. Now check this out. This is amazing how much open space you have. Typically these only open a little bit. See it stops there. We can go further. It goes all the way back here. So all this space is now wide open. Really fantastic. Close the shade. Now it has these places here. Uh, you have a little light on the sides, but you also have these little clips for uh, a bar that I, apparently Volvo sells. I hadn't seen one, but you have one here. A bar from, goes from this side to the other to hang clothes or to store whatever you want. There's one back there and there's one right here. Kind of hooks in place. And also there's, I did see a hook that you can put in there to, you know, hook whatever you want. Hang clothes that way as well. Okay, so let's look at the visibility. So I already lowered the headrest, but uh, you saw that before. So you can see the the rear pillar is pretty significant as far as a um, as far as a blind spot. Now I have the center headrest up a little bit, which is impeding the view. But um, you know, overall, not bad. When I was actually driving it, I didn't notice those blind spots as being an issue too much, especially considering it has blind it has the blind spot monitor system, and um, of course in the parking lot you have the parking sensors, the rear cross traffic alert, the fuel the full camera system, which you can see all around the vehicle. So Considering it has blind spots, I don't think that's a big issue for me anyway, because I'm accustomed to it. My vehicle has big blind spots there. So it wasn't a real issue with me changing lanes or backing up or driving at all. So, but it has them. You can see them right there. You judge for yourself if that's going to be an issue. But uh, 
And of course, there's a lot of technology that compensates for that as well. All right, so there you have it, 2019 XC40 R design. Fantastic vehicle. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about it. I really like it. Um, I don't work for the dealership. I'm not trying to sell this vehicle to you, but I really, really like it. So hopefully, you know, you can watch the vehicle and and, and I've presented it objectively enough to where you can make up your own mind. So thank you for watching and thank you to Parkway Volvo here in Wilmington, North Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.